In this video, we're gonna take a look at a challenge from the Sneak Fetch the Flag, Capture the Flag competition that was going on just previously. I did wanna get some videos out and about, and thankfully, Sneak was super duper generous, giving me a little bit of a sneak peek before the game even got started to take a look at one of the challenges. So in this video, we're going to dive in. This challenge is called Serial Sneaker, and I gotta admit, I'm going in cold. I don't really know what I'm up against. This is kinda of new to me. So uh, forgive me for all the walls that I run into, the rabbit holes that I fall down. Uh, we're just going to have some fun. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. I am inside of my Kali Linux virtual machine that I'll be using for the play test here. And I'm online at this link. Hey, serial hyphen sneaker dot C dot CTF dash sneak dot IO. That is currently where this challenge is hosted. And uh, we'll be get to uh, have a chance to play with this thing. Looks like we have captured Patch, their sneak mascot for all the great stuff that they do. Their little puppy dog uh, for serial cat chasing. It says, please log in to pay for his release and we can log in or forgot password. Now, before I dive in, I do want to note that they have offered the source code or at least a, a zip archive, a file to download to be able to poke and play with this. It's called Serial Sneaker and I have it downloaded right here. Let me go ahead and unzip that if I can type and that should all extract here for us. Looks like uh, some of the file names here are .java, which is interesting to me. A little bit worried. I don't know what I'm going to be getting into. <laughs> Java was not what I expected here. And here are the files that we have. Looks like a a placeholder flag, a simple readme.markdown file, even a help markdown file, the challenge.yml, a docker file to wrap this all up. I don't know what pom.xml or mvnw.cmd stuff is. That might be some Java shenanigans. I think that is Maven or something that it uses here. But let's go ahead and check out the readme to see what we're up against. Okay, this just looks like some uh, hey structure and setup for how they would define this. It uh, looks like it has the can you help patch escape, presumably the description for this, the challenge name, and how we might build it with Docker and how we could run it just as well, including some links to the artwork that's freely accessible. But uh, with that in mind, I suppose we can go ahead and take a look at the source code. I do see a SRC or source directory. Looks like there are a couple of files here in main. I'm going to use sublime text and open just a period here for the whole current directory so that I can view the entire folder over here on the side. Uh, I can tell, hey, we have some resources, presumably the templates or the HTML, the actual hypertext markup language that builds this thing. Interesting, the error pages presumably includes even some exceptions, like a trace if something happens and, and something wrong, an error is caused within the code. The index.html is just as we saw out on the web browser. It says, hey, we've captured patch and we're going to be asked to log in to pay for his release. Ultimately, that is just accessible on the front end. Not all too interesting. Same thing with all of these static files. Uh, looks like there's bootstrap CSS images for us here. Ultimately, the source code is what we want to dive into, presumably in this Java folder here for serial sneaker. And uh, let's check out what this index controller is. Looks like this is the Java code that makes up the back end here. And we're defining this as a package, importing some things from the Spring framework, which is a bit interesting. And we have a public class to be our controller or the real logic behind this thing. We have mappings like URL routes uh, for HTTP specific methods like get or post. And we're going to be returning out, okay, presumably the index as needed. Same thing when we post to retrieve this, when we're trying to authenticate, we have the parameters that we might pass to this, a username and password and CSRF token. And then it does something with serialization utils, uh, tries to deserialize the CSRF token, a little bit interesting. Also prints out testing info. I'm curious if that's just, hey, for debugging, maybe the developer left it on accident. We also add an exception for hello world, all a bit interesting. Um, and that's it. Okay. What else do we have here? Serial sneaker Java will run this as its own application. The serialization utils we saw, which were a little bit interesting. This does sound like a classic Java serialization vulnerability. If there is something to actually take advantage of and beat up here, we have base 64 util as part of the native Java library included and deserialize looks like it does this as it is going to be working with whatever is passed in as in base 64. Uh, goes ahead and returns and retrieves this as an object. And that doesn't seem to return anything else other than throwing errors. Oh no, excuse me. It does return that object. So that could be interesting and worthwhile to explore. Exec helper. Uh, is this executing commands? It seems like it. 
I wonder if this is something we might be able to take advantage of. Given this is uh, Java and we keep referring to serialization and the challenge is literally called serial sneaker, part of me has to think this could very well be something that we would take advantage of with Why So Serial, one of the tools and command line utilities uh, that will help us take advantage of serialization vulnerabilities. Uh, Base64 Helper does a similar thing with at least base 64 functions to decode here. So I'm curious what we might be able to do now. If all we're going to end up doing is authenticating with a post request. And if we were actually to take a look at the source here, I'll hit uh, control U on my keyboard or just right click and view page source. Now we can see the HTML here and it is posting to forward slash to, you know, that index and all the fields name that we were expecting username, password, and then a CSRF token, presumably this big long base 64 string, literally named base 64, or excuse me, CSRF token. So I'm curious, could I just go ahead and decode this? And will it look like just a natural Java object? Serialized, of course, but is there something that we might be able to pull out of that? Let me try and echo this right into base64 minus D or tac D. And yeah, okay, it looks like there is a CSRF token object with some interesting stuff in here where they're using Java util UUID, blah, blah, blah. This is all bits and bytes and, you know, actual non-printable characters as it is a serialized data object. But I wonder if we could do more with this thing. No. I got to admit, hey, being a sneak capture the flag put together by sneak, wouldn't it make sense if sneak would be able to figure some interesting stuff out with this? If I move into this main directory, can I just even use in like the Java source code segment? Let me try and move all the way into where all the Java files are. Here they are present. Let's see if I could use even the sneak command line utility to take a closer look at what might be present here in terms of vulnerabilities or weaknesses. So I am using the sneak command line interface. Uh, it's something you can grab online on their website, go ahead and install it. And we'll use the code submodule or uh, fragment here so that we're able to actually specify, hey, I want you to look at the files in this current directory and we'll test them and look for vulnerabilities. So I'll hit enter on this. It might take a little bit of time to scan through it all, but fingers crossed, uh, it might find something for us to start our research or do something new with. And ooh, right away, we do have one high vulnerability detected. And it says deserialization of untrusted data. Our index controller.java on line 30, just as we were taking a look at this moments ago. Yep. Looks like we go ahead and take our object created out of deserializing the CSRF token that is passed in. Now the CSRF token again is going to end up being passed through serialization utils and deserialize. And this is going to end up running the function that we can see present here. Uh, but deserialize takes this all and deserializes it obviously. So I, I'm, I'm doing a bad job of explaining that. If you weren't familiar with those terms, I'm sorry, uh, serializing and deserializing data is kind of just packaging it up and compressing it a little bit so that it could be later represented or stored and saved and brought back to life really as an object, as some uh, piece of code and logic that bundles up a bunch of properties and potential functions or things, maybe methods, right? But the object that's represented within programming, within code, to be used for later use. So we could potentially get code execution with this sort of thing, right? Could we uh, do more with this other than having unsanitized input from an HTTP parameter flows into Java IO object input stream where it's used to deserialize an object. This may result in an unsafe deserialization vulnerability. Hmm. Okay. So that is seemingly how we would go ahead and exploit this. That is something present in just the post method where we go ahead and enter anything with the CSRF token. So let me just see, I suppose I could fire up burp suite or something. Okay. Now burp is running. We can fire up a temporary project with the default settings. I will make sure the proxy options are rocking on port 8080 as they are. We can use our Foxy proxy now to set up some options for 127.001 port 8080. Cool. Okay. So now let's go ahead and switch to burp suites and let's see if we can go ahead and do this. Please subscribe again. Burp suite fires up here. Can I zoom in on this at all? Yeah. Let's set the font size to like 18 and set the dark theme. So that way people aren't screaming and whining about, you know, having the 
dark mode, right? Oh, come on. That doesn't give me the display up. Let me just fix that. Okay, amp that up to 24. Now we can get back to the proxy and you can see this a little bit better here. So I wonder if we could go ahead and exploit this. Let me try and do some Googling. Let me see how I might exploit a Java deserialization vulnerability. Uh, Port Swigger has some info on this. I'm sure we could find something on like hack tricks or others. Uh, and there are probably a whole lot of other great things to use, even a Java deserialization cheat sheet. And here's hack tricks just as well. So let's read on about what Port Swigger has to offer, chatting about insecure deserialization vulnerabilities. Looks like we have some sections on how to identify insecure deserialization serialization. Uh, also passing malicious data in, injecting arbitrary object types, manually creating your own advanced exploits. So identifying this, uh, they chat about this thing in PHP, they chat about this in Java, and they note any class that implements the interface serializable can be serialized and deserialized. If you have source code access, take note of any code that uses the read object method, which is used to read and deserialize data from an input stream. They also note deserialized objects always begin with the same bytes, which are encoded as R0 in base64, which we should have seen in our CSRF token, so that might be the right way here. Uh, also, going back to our code, an interesting thing is that this uh, exec helper class does implement that serializable package, or that class here, sorry. And down below, I don't know if you caught it, but it has that read object function. So we might be able to just straight up call this function or, or create an object that will do use this class and do it for us. Let's see, how can we go ahead and create one of these? Do they explain or showcase this at all for Java specifically? Here it is. In Java deserialization, object input stream read object acts like a constructor for reinitializing a serialized object. Ooh, will it run it? Will it do, do the command? It will, it will. So it calls run and run is this function that will actually execute this literally as a, as a scanner running runtime exec our command here. So that will kind of detonate and trigger this code for us. We could use tools like why so serial to kind of chain gadgets naturally, but I do want to know how we might create our own exploits here. It says when off the shelf gadget chains and documented exploits are unsuccessful, like using why so serial, you need to create your own exploit. To successfully build this, you only almost certainly need source code access. Thankfully we do. We know what we are targeting here. Um, once you've worked out how to successfully construct this gadget chain, the next step is to create the serialized object. Simply a case of studying the class declaration in the source code, creating a valid serialized object with the appropriate values required for your exploit. As we've seen in previous labs, this is relatively simple when working with string-based serialization formats. Oh, we have a string so format here, don't we? We have an override to string where if we return a, oh, exact helper being the command and the output. Uh, so how do I craft this? Oh, I just need to pass in a command that is base64, correct? Here, they have a lab for this. Does it let me do this? I don't wanna access the lab. I just kinda of wanna know how it's done. Oh, they do have a little template here to use a generic Java program for serializing objects. Let me open that up and see if we can play with that. Here's a Java code. Import data, foo, blah, blah, blah creating the serialized object, serializing the original object being a new object that we define here, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so I wonder if I can just do this. Can I not? Let me grab this code. We'll call this main.java, right? Can I just kind of make a file here? Slap this in? I don't do Java, so I'm making a fool of myself. Let's do main.java, how about that? It does have to match the class name. We're including all this stuff. Can I import just the exec? helper, right? Uh, and then let's not do any of this stuff right now for our main thing, but let's actually go ahead and try a simple system out print line to see, hello, just to validate that this will run for us. And then we have the functions that we might like here, correct? So let's see if in a simple command line, can I go ahead and run this thing? Here, I'll fire up a new command line. Move into that directory. Now I have my main.java. Can I run Java C on main.java? Oh, I need to install it. Okay. Seemingly I might be able to run that, but it does need a dot to denote where it's getting this stuff. Uh, so let me make a data directory and let's try and copy the exec helper into our data. Correct. Uh, does that need anything else? What do they use for their example here? They 
have a foo java which is just oh given a specific package and then serializable so let me just go ahead and modify my data exploit one and just put that in the data package right so now main dot java could go ahead and import data exec helper so those functions and folder names kind of all match right let's try that again package data does not exist no it's in the current directory we'll use java c again but i don't have that installed all right let's uh sudo apt install default spelled properly jdk Fingers crossed that will give us everything that we need to compile Java code. Okay, now fingers crossed. Can I run Java C? Yes, I can. All right, let's try and Java C my main.java. And that does not like base64 helper. Yep, because that needs to be uh, included. Now, the way that they do this when exec helper uh, looks like because it's also base64 helper is in the same uh, package they can use this. Uh, ultimately, I think we can just grab this here and just slap it into our exec helper that is within our data directory because this is one that we're going to be trying to build within our own uh, little exploit here with our own main.java. Let's try and run that again. Fingers crossed. Mm. Base64 helper is public, should be declared in a file named that. Okay, fine. Create a new file called base64 helper.java. Can I save that as that? Perfect. Now let's just slap that in there uh, and let's grab everything that it included in their original base64 Java. But we're going to put that in package data. So it's in the same folder as our other exec helper. Fingers crossed this should now allow us to compile. And it does. No errors. I do have a main.class. So I can simply run Java main. And that says hello as my simple hello world. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and actually create our original object that should be an exec helper type, correct? So that needs to be our original object that should be an exec helper with a command. We'll just use sleep as sort of a temporary test, hmm, trying to see, hey, because this is blind, we don't know if we'll get command output responded and returned out. So let's just see if we could actually return this. Um, we'll want to serialize that object and then print it out. And we could deserialize it if we wanted to just as well. But ultimately, the serialize object is all that I'm really interested in. Uh, can I go ahead and spit that out? Let me Java C main one more time. Oh, it did complain. Incompatible types. String cannot be converted to base64 helper. Ah, okay. So I need base64 helper to be the argument that I give this thing. Base64 helper should be a base64 string, correct? So it has a single decode function and we give it encoded base64 as the argument. This ends up being the command that they decode. So it does need to be uh, a command that is base64 encoded as a object. Let's see if we can mess with that. Let's create a base64 helper command being a base64 helper. And do I need to go ahead and import that as well, presumably, base64 helper. Uh, that should take a string that is a command that I want to run as base64. So let's enter that command variable and we'll need to be able to fill this out. And I think that needs to be some sort of array or list uh, considering this square braces, but I'm not quite sure yet. So let me just echo sleep five into base64. And that gives me this. Now this is where I will enter in double quotes here. Can I run this? Fingers crossed. Nope. Cannot find symbol base64 helper. What are you talking about? Oh, that should be a new object, correct? I think I might just wrap this in curly braces. Is that how that's done in Java? Let's try it. That is. Okay, so it, we can keep it as a list. We just need to wrap it in curly braces so that's one of those. Now, if I run this, fingers crossed, Java main, there's our serialized object. And we could see if this will actually sleep. Let's try it out. Let me go back to this application here. Uh, let me turn burp back on with proxy proxy. Let's get this thing cruising. Intercept is on. Let's do an at a whatever 
a submit this and now our CSRF token, we can modify to be our own CSRF token. Use control U to be able to, hey, I don't know, base 64 URL encode stuff. And fingers crossed if I hit forward here, you don't have data exec helper. That makes sense. You kind of need to be using <laughs> the exact same package names. Oh, goodness. Okay, so if this were to be interpreted in the natural packages that they all use, we should have this in a location where we can use com.sneakctf serial sneaker. So let me move my main.java up a couple directories into where com should be, right? So it should be in that Java folder. Let's take this, let me grab all this code, and then just create this under Java, where I can say, oh, here's main.java as the file that we wanna use here. And let's go ahead and say, we're gonna import all of the other components under the com sneak serial sneak. So I can delete that old main.java. And now in our new one, let's go ahead and import exec helper and base64 helper from all of those package locations. Does that work? Let's try it. I'll go back to my command line. Let me go ahead and remove my main.class and let's move up a couple directories. Okay, so I move into Java and now I have my main.java. Let's try in Java C, that main.java. No errors. It did compile just fine. Let's try and run that main class and there's our output. Okay, let's try this now. Go back to burp suite. Let's add in our CSRF token. I'll hit control U to URL encode this. And now fingers crossed, cannot run program sleep five error, no such file or directory. Ah, this is because they have to be uh, separated and that, okay, tokenized for commands and their arguments. But that does mean that we are starting to get remote code execution. Finally. So let's break this up a little bit more. I can use the base64 helper to encode, correct? Can I not? Uh, the base64 helper does not have an encode option. That's kind of annoying. Can I just use base64 get D, get encoder rather than this? Let me do that as a little experiment, super duper quick. System.out.println. Oh, get encoder needs to be a function call. How about that? Please, no errors, excellent. Let's run Java main. Now we have base64 encoded stuff arbitrarily, good, good, good. Okay, so, so now we have a primitive of base64 encoding stuff and let's just say arg zero can be a string, right, of the simple syntax of bash, how about that? And then let's use arg one can be a tac c correct? And now we could basically have arg2 uh, be really anything else that we would want to run because we're using bash as sort of a subshell to invoke things. So could I then run sleep five, presumably, including the space there? I've tokenized these other arguments for bash, but this next one can be all of the arguments that we would have that bash command run with tac C. So fingers crossed, if I now use my command I could change this up to be base64 helper based off of all of these arguments, arg0, arg1, and arg2, correct? Oh, 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 I just need, I was thinking wrong. I need multiple new base64 helpers. That's the issue. So let's get new base64 helper of arg0, do the same thing for arg2 and arg1 there. And now let's try this. Compile, no errors, let's run. Uh, print that out. I'm done. Compile again. Run again. There we go. Let's try this thing. Let's see if we will sleep for a little bit of time. Burp back on a at a.com. A. Burp suites rocking. Slap in that CSRF token. Run this. Move it to the side. Fingers crossed. <gasps> Look at it spinning. Look at it. 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 Okay. We are successfully sleeping four or five seconds and we get an exec helper response out. Perfect, totally fine, it did run the command. Now we have valid code execution. Let's see if we can get a reverse shell. So because this is out on the open internet, I am going to want to use ngrok as a tunnel where I might be able to actually catch this despite me using a local port here. So let's see if uh, starting up a little ngrok listener, I can 
start a netcat listener on that same port, quad nine, 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 as I am listening for that. Now, uh, I still want to be able to modify and create my own payloads. So let's get back here and let's change the sleep syntax to a simple reverse shell syntax. Let's go to revshells.com and this way I can gain code execution. Not, not that I don't already have, I already have code execution, but we can get better code execution in like an interactive way. So let's grab our ngrok listener location. And let's grab that number for a port, slap that in. And now bash should be able to just generate this thing. I can run this and that hopefully, hopefully, hopefully will give me a callback. Let me pass this in and I am gonna use bash to run this rather than tack I, uh, because we know at least with the previous bash tack C testing that that does exist as a command for us. Uh, and let's see if we can get something here. Let me go ahead and compile this one more time. No errors, run this. We've got our payload now generated. Let's copy this and rock with Burp Suite one more time. I do wanna make sure I've got this accessible and visible for us for my Netcat listener. I do wanna hop on over to our page. Let's fire up Burp Suite and try this one more time with an A at A.com try and log in here, paste in our CSRF token as usual, control U to URL decode that and let's hit forward. And there's my connection. That's it, compromised it on the box. And now we've got all the access that we might need. Fantastic. Uh, where is my flag? <laughs> we can check in the Docker file where the actual location of this thing all is. Uh, let me open up that Docker file in the current directory here. Okay, this spits this into home app. And it, oh, actually no, our flag is in slash home. So let's go move into that directory. CD slash home, LS, and there is our flag. And we are done. We've completed this challenge, we have finished that, and we did some super cool little custom Java deserialization. Now very well, we could have done like why so serial if we, this were something that we would have other gadgets to launch onto, like the commons collection for whatever, or Spring or other frameworks where there were other libraries we might be able to pull from. But in this case, we had some primitives with this exec helper and the base 64 helper that we kind of needed to be able to use and run. This was just, hey, the convenience of the application giving this to us, but it also gave us a little bit more of actual hey, some structure to be able to solve this challenge and run code. Playing with this example that thankfully Port Swigger and that Burp Suite Academy Labs and stuff was willing to give us, that sped up a little bit of our work, but we still need to be able to craft and create these objects so that we could serialize them and then run them and give them to the application. I hope that all made sense. I think that's kind of cool. A lot of fun for this challenge. Uh, I spent way too long on this thing because I was bumping around with Why So Serial trying to think if I could do anything more with it. But uh, man, we got it and it is all done. Hey, huge thanks to Sneak for offering their Fetch the Flag competition, the capture the flag that they put out for free for anyone to jump into and play and learn some cool stuff. And uh, honestly, I'm just super duper grateful for all of Sneak's support. It's no secret they have been a lovely and incredible sponsor for this channel. And hey, I'd like to showcase them some love because you know what? They're doing great stuff. Uh, and I'm just grateful for capture the flag training, something that I'm a huge advocate and proponent for that they are still a champion of and showcasing some of the sweet stuff. And Sneak itself, like, the tool and the product did get to help hone us in on what the real vulnerability was in case you weren't familiar with deserialization before. But the rest of it was kind of us tiptoeing around, uh, learning something and uh, doing some sweet improv to learn something new on the fly. But uh, thanks so much for bearing with me. Thanks for letting me struggle with Java syntax. <laughs> I should probably get better at that. But I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. If you did, please do all those YouTube algorithm things like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Love you. Take care.